Tried to go in, and Zazzle takes the puck away from Robitaille. Robitaille gets it back center. They score! Gretzky scores! That right there is an ecstatic Wayne Gretzky. The best hockey player to ever live, scoring one of the biggest overtime goals of his career. The one exception is that it should have never have happened. You see, in that game six of the NHL Clarence Campbell Conference Finals between the Leafs and the Kings, Wayne Gretzky broke the rules and somehow he got away with it. Today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Now listen, as a guy who's always watching hockey, cooking all these complicated recipes isn't exactly my strong suit. Thankfully though, I have HelloFresh to make my dinner routine 1000 times easier. With games on every single night and most starting right around dinner time, HelloFresh allows me to quickly whip up a meal with their 15 minute recipes so that way I can get back to watching the games. The process is super convenient as well as HelloFresh handles all the meal planning and shopping so that really all I have to do is open my pre-portioned ingredients and get cooking. If you need a quick and healthy meal before heading out to your local pickup game, they've got over 45 dinner options for you to choose from. So if you want to sign up, click the link in the description or you can use my code and get free breakfast for life. As long as the subscription is active, you can get one breakfast item per box to make your mornings way easier. So scan the QR code on screen or click the link in our bio to get started. It's May 27th, 1993. The Dallas Cowboys are the most recent Super Bowl champions, and the NHL is nearing the end of the Stanley Cup playoffs, with Game 6 of the Conference Finals about to commence between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Los Angeles Kings. The Maple Leafs held a 3-2 series lead, and a win would send them to the Stanley Cup Finals for a dream matchup against the Montreal Canadiens. It would also be the first time that they've been there since they last won the cup in 1967. All they had to do was get past the greatest hockey player to ever lace them up. Should be easy enough, but to get to this point, both the LA Kings and the Toronto Maple Leafs were considered surprise participants in the conference finals. Both were third in their division, with Toronto finishing with 99 points and the Kings finishing with 88. Now, if you were a Leaf fan during this time, this is one of the craziest rides of your life. It was the first time in 14 years that the Leafs were able to ice a competitive team. They hired Cliff Fletcher to be their GM in 1991, and he turned the team around in a hurry by hiring Pat Burns in 92. Shortly after, he swung a big nine player deal in which they acquired Doug Gilmore from the Calgary Flames. In the first round, they beat the Detroit Red Wings in seven games on an overtime winner from Nikolai Borshevsky. In the second round, they beat the St. Louis Blues in another wild seven-game series, which saw them advance after a 6-0 beatdown of the Blues in Game 7. The Kings, on the other hand, were taking down Canadian teams one by one. The Kings eliminated both the Calgary Flames and the Vancouver Canucks in six games, with Wayne Gretzky leading the charge. That would set up a conference finals between the Leafs and Kings, and right away, things got nasty. In Game 1, Kings defenseman Marty McSorley caught the Leafs star Doug Gilmore with a huge hit. Instantly, the Leafs captain Wendell Clark came to Gilmore's defense and fought McSorley. After Gilmore got up, he decided to start some beef with the Kings bench and the Leafs coach Pat Burns was so infuriated that he tried climbing the glass to get at Kings coach Barry Melrose. Leafs took Game 1, but that bad blood spilled right into Game 2. It was a 3-2 win for LA, but Gilmore arguably got away with a headbutt on McSorley. That is an infraction that, if called, has a game misconduct penalty attached to it. Gilmore fortunately dodged a bullet, and he was proving early in the series that you can break the rules and you will probably get away with it. Despite the hate building, the Leafs managed to win games 4 and 5 to give them a 3-2 series lead. Up until this point of the series, the Leafs had kept Wayne Gretzky relatively in check, as he only had five points in five games. For Gretzky's standards, that wasn't great. Earlier in the series, the great one looked a tad worn out. And so, there was an article posted in the Toronto Star by this man, Bob McKenzie. After game five, McKenzie wrote that Gretzky skated like he had a piano on his back. I'm sure that wouldn't come back to haunt the Leafs whatsoever, but that brings us to game six in LA. The Leafs were looking to advance 
their first Stanley Cup Finals since 1967, while the Kings were just trying to stay alive. The game was dominated by two players. The Kings' Luke Robitaille had a four-point night with a goal and three assists, and LA was able to build a 4-2 third period lead. However, the Leafs captain Wendell Clark wasn't going to let this team go down easy, and he willed them back into the fight by scoring two goals in the third to complete the hat trick and send this game to overtime tied at fours. Now, let me introduce you to this man, Kerry Frazier. And while he just looks like an everyday referee with some nice hair, he would have a massive impact on this game. Officiating in general during this game was a bit shoddy to say the least. Guys were in Frazier's grill all night and it wouldn't stop either. With the momentum heavily in Toronto's favor, Leafs forward Glenn Anderson would take a two minute roughing penalty as he hit Kings defenseman Rob Blake into the boards from behind. Now, the funny thing about officiating is that it is subjective. In the dying seconds of a do or die game, some people thought that this was a soft call based on how the game was being officiated up until that point. But if you're calling the game by the rules, that is a hit from behind. Now, the LA Kings, who have already scored three power play goals in this game, would have a man advantage in overtime. With LA setting up in the zone and the great one himself looking to strike, what would happen next would change absolutely everything. Gretzky moving toward the net now. The shot, that's blocked. And it hurt Gilmore. He stopped the shot. It hurt him. He fell. And the play was called. So, did you see it? In real time, it seemed as if it was the puck or the follow-through on the shot that clipped Gilmore in the face. However, upon further review, Gretzky did high-stick Gilmore attempting to retrieve the puck. When Gilmore got up, he showed referee Kerry Frazier his bloody chin, courtesy of Gretzky's stick. Under the NHL rules at that time, that infraction would have resulted in a five-minute major and a game misconduct for Wayne Gretzky. That would have undoubtedly changed the overtime and tilted the momentum heavily into Toronto's favor. Except, referee Kerry Frazier never saw it, and neither did the two linesmen of Ron Finn and Kevin Collins. Frazier admitted later in an interview that Gretzky was usually in his ear to make sure calls weren't going against him. But in this moment, Gretzky stayed off to the side. The final call was no penalty. Wayne Gretzky broke the rules and he got away with it. He was able to stay in the game and stay on the ice for that Kings power play. Just moments after that blown call, the great one himself took advantage of the situation. Away from Robitaille. Robitaille gets it back center. They score. Gretzky scores. And the Los Angeles Kings defeat the Maple Leafs. It truly doesn't get more Leafs than that. After Gretzky poured more salt in the wound by getting the game winner, what would follow would be complete outrage of one of the worst blown calls in NHL history. It was getting so bad that the NHL had to bring the head of officiating onto Hockey Night in Canada shortly after Game 6 to try and explain the missed call. Of course, many Leaf fans believed what they wanted to believe. Points because a lot of people who are Leaf supporters think this is a conspiracy to get the LA Kings into the final. Hey, oh, you agree with that? Well, that's ridiculous to agree with that. Uh, the I other... didn't agree with none. I just said, hey, you said it, not me. No. Well, so you disagree or you agree with the fans? That hey, feel that way? you're telling the story, kid. Oh, I said a lot of people feel that way who are supporting you the Leafs. Understandably, no, Yo. of course not. Oh. Despite Game Seven being at home for Toronto in Maple Leaf Gardens, Wayne Gretzky would go on to play in what he calls his best game ever. With three goals and four points, Gretzky put on a show to lead the Kings to a 5-4 Game 7 win. Even though the Leafs weren't good enough to win Game 6 or 7, that blown call undoubtedly changed the momentum of the series. The Kings would go on to the Cup Final and eventually lose to the Montreal Canadiens, who would be the last Canadian team to win the Stanley Cup. But what if the Gretzky high stick was called? Maybe the Leafs go on to win Game 6, and we never get to see the best game of the Great One's career. Maybe the Leafs somehow find a way to beat the Canadians and end the 26-year cup drought and erase the aura of misery that this franchise has had for decades. Or maybe everything went exactly the way it was supposed to. Am I reaching with some of these assumptions? Absolutely. 
but every game, moment, and player has an endless array of possibilities that could have created an NHL far different than the one we know today. But in that game six, Wayne Gretzky broke the rules and got away with it. And that would create one of the most memorable blown calls in NHL history. <laughs> 